more about in the, in the next couple of years. Please give a big round of applause to Terry McAuliffe. Well, good morning, everybody. You fired up? Yeah! Well, I wanted to be here, first of all. Thank you. And I want to tell you why elections matter. Five years ago, I was running for governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And you know we had had a very bad history here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Anti-LGBTQ, anti-women, anti-environment, all these laws had passed. And I ran for governor and said, we're going to end all the discrimination. We're going to make Virginia open and welcoming. I actually ran the nominee of the Republican Party actually was stated saying it should be a crime to be gay in the Commonwealth of Virginia. That who is I ran against. And thanks to all of you who helped me get elected, I became the 72nd governor. And I promised you I would continue on the fight that I said I would do and I was not shy about taking it to them on the issues that matter to make Virginia open and welcoming to everybody in the country. My first executive order, as you know, within seconds of taking the oath of office, executive order number one was to ban all discrimination in the state workforce based upon sexual orientation or gender identity. The first time that had been done. The first governor to designate June as LGBTQ month in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And when I ran for governor, I was the first candidate or statewide official in the entire South to come out for marriage equality. That is something people in the South just had not done before. And after that heroic Supreme Court ruling, I was very proud to be the first governor in the United States of America to actually perform a gay marriage. <laughs> so folks, it's been a great ride. We are a different state than five years ago when I ran for office. This is why you need to vote. This is why we need Tim Kaine in the United States Senate. We have an opportunity to give Tim a great round of applause. We can pick up at least four members of Congress this year in Virginia. We have proven that when you take down walls, you treat everybody with dignity and respect, no matter whom they love, whom they pray to, what their religion is, no matter the color of their skin. And when you do it, guess what happened? Our state had a renaissance. When I became governor, I inherited a $2.5 billion debt, turned it into a record surplus, 200,000 new jobs created, record amount of economic investment. Why? Because we treat everybody the same now in the Commonwealth of Virginia. That stuff in the past is gone forever, but folks, we can never stop fighting. So I wanted to be here today to say thank you for all the folks who were here who have been so helpful to help me get elected. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 2020! <laughs> Let's win 2018 first. Uh, I want to thank James Parrish and all the folks, everybody who worked. I want to thank John Heflin, who was my chief advisor on issues. But to all of you, thank you. God bless you. It's a new state today, and you made it happen. Let's continue it. Thank you very much. Governor, Governor uh, McCall, I work on the Jack Diamond Morning Show, and one of the things... It. We, one of the things we always knew that the governor was going to mention was Virginia wines, and we are close to the wine country, so thank you very much for helping everything you did there. But I always say, and Jack and I chat on the show about you, because um, I, uh, for a strange reason, I am a, a presidential freak. I, I've been to every library, oh, wow. and you know you're into presidents when you've been to West Branch, Iowa, to see Hoover's library. You were really into it. <laughs> um, and I call you uh, on the show the Happy Warrior. What I like about you is you have a smile on your face, and so often you see politicians, they look angry, they're not happy to be there, but you seem happy to be everywhere. And in a week that was really tough for everybody, and people say, oh, it's, it's never been worse. I always say, well, it's never been better. And I, and I think that you're equipped more than anybody to tell everybody here what we have to be happy about and what we can look forward to in the future and what we can do. Great. Well, I thank you. I'm a happy warrior, and I'm also a tough fighter. I believe, folks, when you get elected to office, you got to fight. I am sick and tired of politicians who put their finger up in the wind to sort of see which way the wind is blowing. Fight for the things that you believe in. Fight for your values. You're not always going to win, but get in the game and fight. And as you know, I had a lot of fights as governor. I vetoed, as you all know, I had to veto horrible HB2-like bills in Virginia. Horrible bills that I vetoed and they could not overrule my veto. That was a big, important thing, and that's why these Democrats in the General Assembly were so important. 
I had to stop just horrible bills where discrimination by taxpayer-funded organizations like adoption facilities, homeless shelters, would have been able to discriminate against individuals. I stopped all that. But as you probably all know, my best moment as governor, let me say my worst moment as governor, was probably Charlottesville, Virginia, when neo-Nazis and white supremacists came into our state and they spewed their hatred in our beautiful commonwealth. And you know, I talked to the president that afternoon and I briefed President Trump. I said, this is what's going on in our state. And you need to go out before my press conference as the leader of this nation, as the moral figure to tell people this will not be tolerated in our country. And as you know, the president failed that test. He went out and did a press conference and he blamed both sides. Heather Heyer was a 32-year-old woman who was killed that day protesting against hatred. Donald Trump failed. And then I went out and gave my press conference, and I did the right thing. I told those neo-Nazis and white supremacists and all right to get the hell out of Virginia, and while you're at it, get the hell out of the United States yeah. of America. We will not tolerate that here. And my greatest moment, as you probably all recall, was when I stood on the steps of the Capitol in April of 2016. And I stood on the steps of the Capitol where, in 1902, a state senator put in our Constitution a disenfranchisement of felons, such that the felons would not be able to vote. And his quote that day was that I am doing this to eliminate the darky from being a political factor in Virginia. That is what he said. But folks, 114 years later, a new sheriff in town, and I stood in that same Capitol, and with a swipe of my pen, I restored the rights of 206,000 felons, more than any governor in the history of the United States of America. People deserve second chances. You do not continue to hold people down. So yeah, I'm the ultimate optimist. And we have a lot to look forward to. I thought the hearings were a disgrace. I thought the United States Senate was a disgrace the other day. I believe Dr. Ford. I believe the women who have come out. And I just want to thank Jeff Flake. I mean, we do need an FBI investigation, but we are a great country. But let me say finally why I'm so optimistic. Since I left office in January, I've traveled to 22 states. I have gone to help every candidate. I talk about how Virginia was red and we turned it into blue. We had record investment, biggest investment in K-12, job creation. That's how you win. And today, I will tell you folks, we are going to win at least, I think, 35 to 50 members of Congress, and we are going to take back control of the United States Congress. And I wouldn't have said this a month ago, but I will now tell you, we're going to win the United States Senate back after all the shenanigans that went on. We're going to pick up Arizona, we're going to pick up Nevada, we're going to pick up Tennessee, and Beto O'Rourke is going to win in Texas. And then finally, what is really, really important, and this is why I've traveled to all these governor's races, we got to elect more Democratic governors. I proved to you that the Senate and House are broken. They do nothing. All the rollback of these rights, folks, is at the state and local level. And we as a party have not paid attention to that. we got to win at the state level. If I were not governor today and passed Stop Those Bills, all of this stuff would have passed. We'd be a different state today. Every woman's health clinic, every Planned Parenthood clinic would be closed in Virginia. 27 shut down and passed. I vetoed it. HB2 like bills would have passed if we had a Republican governor. That's why we got to win. And the good news, we're down to 16 Democratic governors today. The good news, folks, is we are going to pick up Maine, Michigan, Illinois, Nevada, New Mexico. Scott Walker is gone in Wisconsin. We are going to win in Florida. We are going to win Stacey Abrams in Georgia. We're going to pick up Ohio. We're up five points in Iowa, and we are up in Kansas. Folks, this is our year. I want to thank Nova Pride for the great, great work that they do, and let's give our president a great round of applause for his great leadership, and let's give the whole board a great round of applause. But folks, let's get out there. Let's fight. Let's never give up. People are counting on us to fight for them. God bless you, and let's go get them. Yeah! Uh, uh, Governor, I love the fact that you knew what the uh, the polling in Iowa was. I like that. I like that you. And I just want to say one second. Um, between uh, the crowd and myself here, 
How great would a debate between the two of them be? Oh my God, how wonderful would that be? Oh, the smile on his face. Okay. You have to sell tickets to that, baby. <laughs> yeah, move over, Colin McGregor. Um, but uh, thank you so much, Governor. Thank you for everything you've done for this wonderful Commonwealth of Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up, Terry McCall. Thank you, and thank you. I hope if he does get elected, he doesn't, uh, he puts his uh, presidential library close, close so I don't have to travel that far.